Welcome students to this lecture on the basic structure of an analytical essay. This can be used for evaluation essays, argumentative essays, if you're doing a comparative analysis, really anything that an English course in college will throw at you. So I hope that you take this with you beyond this course. First, we have your introduction. The first sentence of your introduction is going to be a hook or an attention grabber. A lot of folks tend to think that hooks only belong in narrative essays, but that's not true. After all, you want to engage your reader from the very beginning to read your essay, even if it's analytical. You can use a shocking fact that you've gathered about your topic as your hook. You can use sensory words or figurative language in order to draw your audience in. You can ask your audience a question in order to engage them with your writing. And then you can use a quote either from your research or something else that you found along the way regarding your topic. The middle of your introduction is going to contain background information. You're going to be asking the question, what does your reader need to know in order to better understand the ideas that you'll present in your body paragraphs? Essentially, you're providing context for your topic. Let's say that I'm arguing that the Cheesecake Factory is one of the best restaurants in America right now. What if my readers have never been to the Cheesecake Factory? I'm gonna to have to go ahead and provide them a little bit of context or some idea of what that experience is like in order for them to better understand my argument. Then the last sentence of your introduction is where your thesis statement is going to go. Remember that the thesis statement states the main idea of your essay. It is your central claim, for example, the Cheesecake Factory is one of the best restaurants in America right now. And the thesis statement will also reflect the structure and the ideas that you'll present in your essay. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's say that my fully fleshed out thesis statement is that the Cheesecake Factory is one of the best restaurants in America right now due to its high quality food, customer service, and overall dining atmosphere. Well, since I mentioned high quality food as my first criteria, then I'm going to go ahead and put that in my first body paragraph. That way the audience can easily follow along with the structure along with customer service and the overall dining atmosphere. Those are gonna be my second and third body paragraphs. Finally, thesis statements avoid statements of intention, such as in this essay, I will prove that the Cheesecake Factory is the best restaurant in America. Or this essay will argue that the Cheesecake Factory is a great restaurant. Generally, in academic writing, we avoid personal pronouns like I and you. We avoid statements of intention because our readers just want us to give it to us straight. Right, what is the argument? After you've written your introduction, you're gonna go ahead and write the body of your essay. This is going to be the bulk of your essay. It's where most of your writing is going to be. If we think about the structure of an essay like a dinner that we're having, consider the introduction to be the appetizer, right? We want to entice our readers with that information. The body paragraphs or the body is considered to be the steak and potatoes. It's where, where all of the real uh, substantial content can be found. And then the conclusion is of course our dessert or the icing on top of the cake. So we have our body paragraphs. The first sentence of a body paragraph is going to be your topic sentence. Now, many of you have probably heard of topic sentences before or maybe have even used them, but what exactly are they? A topic sentence is a sentence that holds the main idea of your paragraph. And it almost always has a key word or a key phrase that can be found in your thesis statement. 
Generally, this keyword or key phrase is also usually repeated in the concluding sentence, but we're going to get to that in just a second. What do I mean by a keyword or a key phrase? Let's take our original thesis statement as an example. The Cheesecake Factory is one of the best restaurants in America due to its high quality food, customer service, and overall dining atmosphere. Now, based on the structure of that thesis statement, my first body paragraph is most likely going to be about the high quality food because that's the criteria point that I listed first. Now, there are two key words within that, high quality and food. So it only makes sense that at least one of those keywords is contained in my topic sentence. So that way it connects directly back to my thesis statement. After you have your topic sentence laid out, you are then going to craft the middle of your paragraph, which contains supporting details. These are evidence and reasoning. Your evidence is based on the research that you've completed. So you're gonna integrate quotes from your research, maybe some examples, personal anecdotes that other authors or reviewers have given to your subject and or facts and statistics about it. You are then going to give your reasoning in which you explain, elaborate, interpret, and or analyze what that evidence has to say about your argument and how it relates back to your thesis statement. Then you're going to have you, of course, your concluding sentence for this paragraph. This recaps the main idea of the paragraph, but very importantly, does not repeat the topic sentence verbatim. After all, in your entire paper, there should be no sentences that are repeated verbatim. Also, you're going to use a keyword or a key phrase found in the topic sentence. I mentioned this before. Again, if we look at our original thesis statement example, high quality and or food should probably be present in the last sentence. Finally, this sentence can also be used as a transition into the next paragraph. So for example, I've just talked about the high quality food. My next paragraph is going to be about the customer service at the Cheesecake Factory because that's what I outlined in my thesis statement. So maybe I can give my audience a little hint that the next paragraph is going to be about customer service that the Cheesecake Factory has to offer. After you've done all that, you have your conclusion for your paper. This restates the thesis statement in about one to two sentences, but just keep in mind, it's not verbatim. You're going to word it differently than the original thesis statement, or in other words, you're going to paraphrase the main ideas from the last sentence of your introduction, your claim. Then most importantly, you're going to address the so what factor by answering any one or all of these questions. Why does what you've written matter? What is the purpose of telling your story or relaying these ideas? And or how does your writing contribute to the overall scholarship of the subject? After all, these ideas that you have are all new. They've never been written before. So you are in fact contributing to the general scholarship of your subject. And that's something really important to keep in mind. I hope this helps you understand the structure of an essay a little bit better, but if you still have questions, you know how to reach me. Until then, I'll see you next time.